This is a video of me installing a 2300 foot water line going to my house. The original plan when I bought the property was to have a well put in. The water well man said there's about a 50-50 shot of actually hitting water. The geology of this place is there's about 40 feet of clay and then it's solid rock for the next 2,000 feet. At first I rented a walk behind trencher, but the thing was so slow I calculated it's going to take me about 40 hours to do this trench. So I took it back and got a real trencher. We've had a really wet spring and the ground is almost too moist for this. But this is the closest the ground has been to being ready for many months. Even this big machine is pretty slow. This clip right here is sped up 3200 times and it's still not moving that fast. I rented this machine from a small local rental place and it was actually cheaper per day than the unit I got from Home Depot. It's a good thing I got some music going in my headphones to alleviate some of the boredom. This is the layout of the machine. Got a couple gauges but the most important fuel gauge doesn't really work. Here's the throttle I was told while trenching to always run it at full throttle. This handle raises and lowers the trenching boom. This one moves the boom back and forth. There's a joystick for operating the blade up front. It moves side to side and up and down. This lever is supposed to control ground speed while you're trenching, but I think the machine's a little worn out so it doesn't really work. And this lever controls the speed of the trenching chain. And the foot pedals override the uh, trenching ground speed lever and make it go either faster or backwards. After spending 10 hours on this machine, I'm thankful that I'm almost there. The building has underground electric service and it runs somewhere in this location, so I'm digging this part out by hand. The work sure makes me realize what a great machine that trencher is. The bigger the diameter of a pipe, the less pressure loss you have as the water flows. I hooked a pressure gauge up to the meter that's by the street then use the distance to do some calculations and consider that the water line is going downhill instead of uphill. I calculated that I needed between an inch and an inch and a quarter water line size to get adequate water pressure. The supply house didn't have inch and a quarter line. An inch and a half was not much more than one inch. So I decided to go ahead and get the one and a half inch diameter water line. So here's the plan. I've got a T to connect up a water hose, couplings to go between each of the 500 foot rolls, another T for a water hose valve, a T to go to our future house, which for now we'll have another water hose connection. And finally the line going to the barn dominium. This is the connection to the meter box up at the road. This is going to be one very long water line. Off in the distance you can see our red barn dominium. The water meter was flopping around. My first thought was, I sure I hope it don't cause a leak on the utility side of this thing. Right. Finally, it's time to start hooking up the polyethylene pipe. Also generally called PE or poly pipe. You can't glue PE pipe. Either has to be fused by melting it together or joined with a mechanical connection. Here's the supervisor making sure I'm doing an adequate job. I got all the equipment at a company called ACT Pipe and Supply in Austin. They cater mostly to big developers and local utilities. I thought walking in that they'd told me to get lost, but everyone I talked to was extremely helpful. I couldn't have got the job done without their great customer service. I bought the pipe in 500 foot rolls. This was to reduce the amount of couplings, which is a good thing since each coupling costs about $80. I told my daughter who was also helping that that big crescent wrench was called a BFW, but that she'd have to figure out what that stood for. These 500 foot rolls are a major pain to roll out. I now understand why utility companies have spool trailers. We unrolled five rolls. By the fifth roll, we almost looked like pros. Here you can see a stainless steel insert that goes in the pipe before you hook up the fitting. Hey guys, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe.
The pipe cut's really easy with the Sawzall. We've got a PEC supply line coming out of this lab. I'm going to hook up a short run of PECs and then connect the PECs to the PE line. This is the last fitting to install. If you're wondering, I did turn that electric fence off before I started this work. So about to turn the water on, there's about 2,300 feet of line. Hopefully I have no leaks, maybe just one. I'll be, I'll be okay with just one leak. I've got a faucet open down there to relieve any pressure. So uh, let's hope this works. I'd like to take a shower. Well, there's two small leaks, but we got water back here. Feels good. I actually get to take a shower. Fix those leaks probably tomorrow, but uh, mission accomplished. Got water. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. Oh, and if you like this content, please hit that subscribe button. Have a great day.